Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy II for the Nintendo Famicom system. We're outside here, uh, in, outside of Basque here, and we're going to uh, sell all that equipment that we got from Gordon, and then we're also going to buy the uh, Insuna spell for uh, Fest to work on when we head back to uh, Kashawan Keep. So, we're going to uh, head back there, uh, but first we're going to stop by... Uh, the rebel base in Altier to get that, uh, kind of that secret message from Hilda. She's going to, uh, scold Gordon for, uh, fleeing. And basically because if, uh, Gordon was there, then we would never have to make that trip into the ice cave. And we, you know, Joseph wouldn't have had to, uh, give his life to save us. So, yeah, she's, uh, rightfully kind of angry at, uh, Gordon. I mean, he was trying his best, but, you know, and, uh, it didn't turn out all that well. So there we got something now for Fest to work on uh, during battles. So, alright. Well, let's uh, skadoodle noodle out of here. Get into more random encounters. There's uh, around this area uh, and inside uh, Kashawan Keep, but there's the final uh, goblin, the Goblin Prince. Uh, it's kind of a rare encounter. Uh, I'm not gonna really try to farm it. Uh, hopefully I get into it. If I don't, then I'll have to farm it at a, a later time, but in the meantime, you know, hopefully we just, uh, it pops up, so. It's kind of rare on the outside. It's in the area around Kashwan Keep. Uh, it's like a 1.8% chance to happen. Uh, it's a little bit easier in Kashwan Keep. There's like a 4.5% chance of it happening. Uh, but still, a pretty rare monster, so. But, I will, uh, go looking for it then, so. But, uh, it's probably shorter for us to, uh, head back, uh, to Kashawan Keep. Maybe we can run to that Goblin Prince and, uh, pick up a Chocobo, uh, rather than go the long way around. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll just end up getting a Chocobo, go back, get that scene, but save before I get that scene, uh, so that uh, I can, you know, ride the chocobo around a little bit, so. Get a little bit of a tour of the world map. So, this world map uh, wraps around itself, uh, like how the other Final Fantasy uh, map did, so. Uh, but actually you can uh, navigate the entire world map uh, on the ground, uh, the chocobo. Like, you couldn't do that in uh, Final Fantasy 1, you needed the ship to kind of go around, but you'll find out that this is like one big huge continent, so uh, you can get around it all on uh, Chocobo. So it's like uh, Final Fantasy V, where uh, the, in the third world of Final Fantasy V, they give you that one uh, side quest uh, from Mirage. The guy's like, hey, if you can ride around the entire world uh, on a Chocobo, uh, you can, uh, I'll give you a prize. And the prize is the Mirage Vest. Which was uh, really handy uh, in my uh, second job fiesta, uh, being able to beat Shinrayu. So, but because it gives you the like the blink status, and blink in that game it uh, means that uh, two attacks, two physical attacks, will uh, guarantee miss. So unlike blink in this uh, game, where it just increases your evasion. It doesn't guarantee that you're not going to get hit. So. But. I don't know which is better. I guess, uh. Hmm. I guess it depends on how lucky you are. So. If you raise your evasion enough and you're really lucky and you avoid more than two hits, well then, blink would be better in this game. But. If you have low evasion even with the blink spell and you're still getting hit, well, then I guess you'd rather take the two free hits. So. But, hmm. also try to work on Gordon's uh, magic there a little bit, so build up his cure spell. Um, I still have him in the front row so he can get hit like that, uh, in the hopes that he gains uh, some hit points. Like I said, Gordon has really good stats, so if he gains a hit point growth, it'll be uh, 22 hit points. So, because that's his, uh, his stamina, and your stamina... Uh, it determines how many hit points you get. Uh, it's just, uh, when it says you gain hit points up, 
uh, the amount of hit points you get is your stamina. So that's why Booker has so many hit points right now because uh, he has uh, the highest stamina of all the characters. So and he keeps. Uh, he also keeps getting hit, and that helps raise his raise his stamina. Uh, because as you take damage, that can potentially increase your stamina. And remember, there's that targeting bug where uh, the characters in group in uh, positions two and four, Maxine and Booker's positions, uh, they get targeted more than Fess and your character in the fourth slot. So that's a big difference from Final Fantasy One, where the character in Fess's position took 50% of the physical attacks. And the character in Maxine's slot took 25% uh, of the attacks, and then the Booker and Gordon, the third and fourth, took roughly like 12.5. So, it was like one half, one fourth, one eighth, and one eighth. So, it was the rough uh, estimates. But, they were, like I said, I, I talked about that in the playthrough of that thing. It's more like 12.7, I think, for the third character, and then 12.3 for the fourth. But it's so slim that it might as well just, like I said, be like 1 eighth. So let's see if Gordon gets his uh, MP growth here. Since we used up the rest of his magic. So. But. Yeah, Gordon, if you give him enough. Uh, you know, chance to grow, uh, you know, he can grow into anything, because he has stats all around, you can make him a magician, because he has high intellect, uh, you can make him a fighter, because he has high strength, 22, high agility, 22, so, and it kind of behooves you to actually put some effort into Gordon, uh, even though Gordon will leave our party, uh, he comes back again, so Gordon and our next character that we get, they're going to kind of rotate, they're going to jump in and out of the party, they'll flip-flop with one another a few times, so... I just wanted to make sure I'm close to the Chocobo Forest. I am. It looks like we're not uh, running into any of these, uh, whatchamacallit, any of the uh, Goblin Princes, unfortunately. The Goblin Prince is making me think of that movie Labyrinth uh, with David Bowie. Uh, it's a good movie, good like, kids movie. Uh, this older sister, this older woman, older girl. Because she's like a teenager, uh, Sarah. She has to babysit her younger brother, Toby, and she actually just do like costumes and uh, like drama and plays and stuff like that. So, of course, she's really annoyed that she has to uh, babysit her brother because it takes up her time. And so she makes this wish that she wishes that the goblin prince would come and take Toby away, and lo and behold, uh, he does. And then she has to solve this labyrinth uh, to get the baby back. If she doesn't solve it in 24 hours, then uh, the baby will become a goblin. And there's all these uh, goblins that she's going through. There's like a whole goblin city, and there's, you know, goblins that, you know, under the command of David Bowie, the goblin prince. So I guess that it means that there was a lot of kids who were sold to the goblin prince. Apparently there's a... Uh, a sequel to it, but not a movie. It was a, either a book or a comic book. Not entirely sure, but uh, uh, from what I read, uh, it was like Toby, the boy from the first thing, you know, grows up, and uh, he's kind of summoned back into the world of Labyrinth to like become the new Goblin King. So I have to look it up, but I, uh, I enjoyed that movie. Although it, uh, it made me want, when I was a kid, you know, because I, I saw the movie, it was a Jim Henson movie, uh, with all the puppets and stuff. Uh, it made me, uh, when we used to rent movies, you know, on VHS way back in the day, it made me want to rent another one of his uh, movies for, that I thought was for kids, The Dark Crystal. And that movie gave me nightmares as a kid, because it's, it's pretty scary. There's some pretty uh, ugly puppets, the uh, sexies, they're like the evil bird people. And then there was like the good half, that was like the evil half, there was like these, there was these beings and they split themselves into the good half and the bad half. Uh, and uh, it was a, it's a pretty creepy movie. So, the one witch is like really ugly, even though she's a good guy. Uh, so, there's these like pod people that the, the bad uh, Skeksis, uh, they drain their life force. They show them like draining the essence out of these things to make themselves younger. Yeah, 
that's uh, pretty crazy. So there's the Arena and Palamecia Castle. We won't be visiting them until much later. If we head east from Palamecia Castle, we go around and kind of follow this river. To the south of that river is Mercidia. Um, really tough monsters around there, but if you, like, kind of cheat, uh, you can get there. Uh, you can get there and, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, get really good equipment and spells. Uh, Mercidia is, like, the home of all the mages. Uh, so all the spells in the game are sold there. We're gonna keep going around here to get to, uh, Altir. So I'm just gonna make my save right here. Now I can just mount the chocobo, it runs away. Somehow can run across the water. I don't think there's chocobos that run across the water until Final Fantasy VII. I think it's the blue one that runs, well, blue, blue runs across rivers. And then I think black runs across water. And then gold can run across everything. Gordon, you should have helped us. Joseph died because of you. Hilda, I... Don't speak to me. It's been a while since I played Final Fantasy VII. I wasn't really a fan of it. I'm not a big fan of uh, the 3D games, so... See, so, yeah, I'm just gonna reset uh, the game here. And uh, then I can uh, start my save up again. And I will be on the Chocobo. And then we can uh, run back. So, man, this choke we can't even cross the rivers. I think in Final Fantasy VII there's uh, what's called there's the uh, what's it called uh, the gold. Uh, you have like yellow chocobos who just like run across the grass, and then you can eventually get breed them to make uh, blue chocobos. So I think they run across rivers, and then you get green chocobos that like run across mountains. And then you can breed them together that are black chocobo that can run across rivers and mountains. And then you can breed that with another chocobo. Uh, and you get the ultimate chocobo, the gold chocobo, because you can like, run across everything. So, and apparently you need to do that to get like some of the uh, special materia. The materia is like these uh, like magic crystals that teach you spells and abilities. So... That was another, I guess, a thing that I didn't like maybe about Final Fantasy VII and a lot of the ones afterwards that, uh, like, the characters lost their, like, uniqueness. Because in that game, like, it was all just a turn based on their, like, materia, so everybody can do everything. Uh, you know, there's no really distinguishing characteristics of the characters. They had limit breaks, which were, like, their special attacks, but, like, it wasn't like one person was, like, a, a fighter, one person was a knight, one person was a black wizard, or a white mage. It was like, you can make everybody everything, so... Uh, you know, there were some minor stat variations, but... You know, it was mainly all... Based on your, uh... Uh... Whatchamacallit? Your material, uh, equipment. That you had equipped on your character. I guess you can, like, well... You know, I guess in this game you can make everybody everything too, but, like, the game kind of discourages it. Three, you can kind of do that, because with the class system... But then you wouldn't have a balanced party. Um, four was nice because it, you know, it went back to the class system and you had a new strategy because your party was always changing. Five was, you know, with the job system like three, you can make everybody be everything. Uh, and uh, but then six was was good. Everyone kind of had uniqueness to them, uh, but then uh, they lost that uniqueness at toward like about. A third of the way through the game when uh, Magicite became available and Magicite was like crystals that taught you magic abilities and skills and st well not skills just magic but before that like everyone kind of had a class you know Locke was your thief uh, like Sign was your samurai Sabin was your monk Edgar was uh, like a machinist <clears throat> uh, I don't know I think the game would have been neater if like uh, like, the only three, four people who could use magic was, uh, Celis, uh, the lady who was in, the Imperial who was infused with magic, uh, Terra, the half-esper, she was naturally born with it, and then, uh, Relman Strago from, uh, Thamasia, which was, like, uh, the village where people from the, who could use magic kind of settled after the War of the Magi, which was the big war that, with magic that almost destroyed the world. 
Eventually I will get to that game. Probably in like five years. <laughs> Based on how slow I play games. So... This year I hope to get on... Uh, well, I'll get this game, Final Fantasy 3, done. And then I hope to get uh, maybe the first four Dragon Quests done. And that would be uh, my goal. And then of course there's naturally the Final Fantasy V, four job fiesta. And then uh, play every year. So this year I will be doing it for... Uh, who will I be doing it for? Now my thing, uh, Small Angel Rescue. So, preview of that, I will have, uh, Knights, Red Mages, uh, Bard, and then the Samurai. So, it should be a, a pretty easy one, I think. Samurai, they say, is probably one of the best classes in the game. Knights are really good. Uh, a little slow on magic, but with the Red Mage, they can get the first, uh, up to level two type spells. Use white and black, and black magic, so. It should be pretty good. And the bard has a unique ability to sing. Uh, it can actually use its one song, I think, uh, lullaby, or love song, uh, to actually uh, freeze Omega. So it's one way to inflict the stop status on Omega. So Omega might actually be easy to defeat. Omega being the one of the optional super bosses. Luckily, I've been able to defeat Omega and Shinrai, or the two uh, optional super bosses in that game, uh, for all the fiestas I've done. So, so sorry, I'm not really talking too, too much about this game, but like I said, not much is really going on here right now. Uh, like I said, we're just uh, trying to get back to. Uh, Pop so we can get uh, Sid to uh, fly us back to Kashiwan Keep. So I didn't keep the Chocobo uh, much longer because uh, I figured I'd want to get try to get Gordon a few more stats. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get targeted much. Uh, the whole point of him being in the front row is so that he would get targeted and uh, lose hit points. So this is a place where you can obviously do that cheat, where you would target him yourself. Uh, and uh, cause him to lose hit points, but not gonna do that. Well, unfortunately, I will do that at one point. Uh, the boss of Kashuan Keep, uh, he's uh, immune to basically every spell. Every spell that you cast on him will heal him. So yeah, unfortunately, Maxine is gonna be useless in that battle. Uh, so still just be spamming her black magic against our own characters, but in order to prevent, uh, you know, hit point growth from happening, I will be healing whoever she attacks with the spell. And the good thing is that the, uh, Scourge spell, we got lucky that we got the Scourge spell, uh, we would've been really even luckier if we would've got the Berserk Tome, because then she could cast the Berserk Tome on our characters, and that would've made the, boss, the upcoming boss battle really easy. Berserk makes your characters really, really strong. It increases their attack power. Uh, since it's cast on your characters, it wouldn't affect that flame, but... We got lucky with the Scourge Tome because uh, we're gonna get a piece of armor. Uh, we're gonna get gold armor, uh, gold armor and a gold shield in uh, Kashuan Keep. And uh, gold equipment gives the uh, resistance to uh, poison. So... Uh, yeah, gold gives to poison, fire, I mean flame mail gives it to ice, ice mail gives it to flame, and diamond equipment gives it to lightning. So, we could have gotten a lightning shield uh, from the, uh, uh, not a lightning shield, a diamond shield uh, the, to prevent lightning. Uh, well, it doesn't prevent it, but it reduces the damage a lot. We could have gotten one of them from the uh, adamantite turtle, which was the boss in the snow caverns. He actually becomes a random encounter in Kashuan Keep. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when I did a test run, I got two diamond shields, and they're like kind of endgame level equipment. They're one of the best shields in the game. Uh, and uh, got two of them, so both Fess and Booker got one. But uh, in this run, hmm, the actual playthrough that I'm doing uh, didn't work out, so. But that's okay. Like I said, it's, uh, it's the luck of the draw, you know? 
Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. You make me think of that Rod Stewart song again, like, uh, some guys have all the luck, some guys get all the pain, some guys do all the work, some guys do nothing but complain. I think that's how it goes. Yeah, I'm off key and I'm getting the words wrong, so committing a double sin, but at least I didn't commit uh, one sin. I like to joke with this girl that I'm kind of uh, floating with, uh, that I break the 11th commandment, like, thou shalt not walk your dog in the rain. So my dog hates it when I take him out in the rain, but you know, he has to go out and make his, do his business, so... But whenever I take him out in the rain, he just looks at me like he hates me. But luckily, we haven't been getting much rain here, and uh, and uh, where well, I'm at here in Virginia, so it's good. So gotta pray for the people out in California, though. In certain areas, they're getting like uh, they say it's a conveyor belt of storms, one storm after another, and it's causing a lot of property damage. And I think there's like some homes that cause like mudslides, so the Either the mud comes down and crashes on top of the homes or the foundations give out. So. But, you know, hopefully if any of you viewers out there have family out there, they're all safe. So, he said, keep them in your prayers if you're a prayer, you know, for whatever deity you believe in. So. Alright, well, let's take the Sid's airship back to Cashewan Keep. Make a quick save outside Cashorn Keep because uh, we got a big dungeon ahead of us uh, in our next episode. So come back and uh, explore it with us. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks for following along. Bye.